is a whirlwind seven-day trip to Japan visiting the three main cities of Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, while also catching them at their peak beauty with sakura blossoms in full bloom really possible? Let's find out. While I always recommend at least two weeks in Japan for your visit, there are those of you that either don't have the time or want to dip their toes into Japan before committing to a longer stay, and this seven-day itinerary is for you. We will be basing this trip around the seven-day JR Rail Pass for maximum savings and focusing on the Golden Triangle of Japan to get the most bang for your buck. Stick around to the end where I'll also explain how I would expand this itinerary into a more relaxed 10 day trip. And while this trip is focused on spring, I'll include activities that can be enjoyed all year round. Even if you cannot visit in spring, this itinerary will still be useful to you. Before we get started, here's three key points to remember. First, spring is the most busy and expensive time to visit Japan. Booking early is important to get the best deals on accommodation and reserve seats on trains. Second, remember to buy your JR Pass before entering the country. In most cases, you will not be able to purchase one after landing in the land of the rising sun. Finally, after the sakura begin to bloom, they will only last about a week or so weather dependent. This is at roughly the same time each year, but for that perfect timing, check the sakura forecast, which is updated by Japan's Meteorological Society a month or so in advance when they are expected to be in full bloom. Let's begin. Day 1. Arriving in Tokyo, be sure to exchange your JR Pass voucher for the train ticket so that it can be used in the automatic gates. Since this will be a short trip, I encourage you to pack light, but if you have some heavy bags, consider using the airport luggage services to send your bag forward to your hotel, leaving you free to hop on a train directly for Tokyo and start having fun right away. First, head to the Asakusa area. Here, you can get your first taste of Japan at the iconic Sensoji Temple, one of Japan's most significant and oldest temples. The Asakusa area is also great for taking spring walks along the Sumida River, grab lunch from one of the many restaurants or a lunchbox to enjoy the Hanami experience at Sumida Park with views of the Tokyo Skytree, which is just 15 minutes away if you want to visit and this spot offers unparalleled views of the city. Mount Fuji can even be seen from the tower provided the weather is favorable. By now it should be the early evening so check into your hotel and then head out to Shibuya to catch a glimpse of the world's famous scramble crossing in all its glory. This is a great time to check out some shops or get that traditional Japanese meal at the restaurant of your choice and then enjoy the nightlife. Day 2. Wake up early and head over to Harajuku Station. From here take a relaxing walk through the Meiji Jingu Shrine which is surrounded by 170 acres of forest despite being in the center of Tokyo. If you were overwhelmed by the bustle of Tokyo on your first day, the peace found here will recenter and fortify you for the rest of your trip. After exploring Meiji to your content, you can continue on to Yoyogi Park, which has over 700 cherry trees, making it one of the most popular hanami or flower viewing spots in the city. Hanami parties can be seen all over Japan during spring and can make for a great way to immerse yourself in the culture, but no hanami party is complete without sake. However, finding the right sake can be quite challenging outside of Japan and that is where this video sponsor, Tipsy Sake, is here to help. Tipsy is on a mission to bring sake from the breweries in Japan straight to your door with their unique subscription service. After signing up and taking their taste preference quiz, Tipsy curated three bottles that would match my palate, and the Yuho Eternal Embers from Ishikawa Prefecture was definitely my favorite, with a rich texture and bold umami flavor. I love to drink sake, and the included guide with information on regional flavors, food pairing suggestions, and how to properly warm up and store your sake was something that I found fascinating. Tipsy is offering all viewers who click my link found in the description and use the code Inaka 2023, a 10% discount on all products. Membership benefits include special offers, reduced shipping fees, and a traditional Hinoki Japanese Cypress Masu cup, which becomes aromatic when sake is poured into it. Thanks, Tipsy, for supporting my channel, and whether you're drinking under a sakura tree or in the comfort of your own home, make sure to follow your local laws and please drink responsibly. Now let's continue our journey across Japan. Next up, you'll have a choice. For the style-conscious individuals, you can return to Harajuku and explore the fashion center of Tokyo or grab a train from here to Akihabara, Japan's electric town, to indulge in all the tech, games, anime, and pop culture Japan is so famous for. After the night falls, Akihabara really comes alive, but at this point I'd recommend exploring Shinjuku 
taking a walk through Kabukicho and then down to Golden Guy, with over 200 tiny shanty style bars squeezed into six streets, Golden Guy is one of those unforgettable little places to grab a drink and interact with the locals. Before we leave Tokyo, some alternative all year round activities that can be enjoyed are Tokyo Disneyland and Disney Sea, the Imperial Palace and Gardens, Odaiba and Team Lab, or Yokohama, which is often confused as part of Tokyo because of how close it is. For day three, you can head directly to Kyoto via the bullet train, but for that real spring in Japan experience, I'd recommend getting up early and taking a detour to Kawaguchiko at the base of Mount Fuji. The Fuji Five Lakes are stunning in spring and offer one of the best photo opportunities in the country at the Chireto Pagoda, a view so iconic that I bet everyone watching this video has seen this image. And if you haven't, then let me know in the comments. The Fuji Five Lakes can also be explored by bus to visit the wind and ice caves on the border of the haunted Aokigahara Forest. Kawaguchiko can be done as a day trip provided you leave the area before 6pm, otherwise you're going to need to spend the night. But there are many onsen hot springs in the area, so it might be best to take your time, which would also give you the opportunity to relax and also catch the sunrise over Mount Fuji, or even visit Japan's best theme park, Fuji-Q Highland, which features some of Japan's best roller coasters and a 900 meter long haunted house, the largest in all of the country. Now because this is a short trip to Japan, you could consider skipping Mount Fuji altogether in favor of spending more time in Kyoto, our next destination, and provided you sit on the right side of the train, you'll also be able to see Mount Fuji from your seats when passing. Day 4 If Tokyo is the heart of Japan, Kyoto is most certainly the soul. Kyoto's histories and temples are so beautiful that it was spared as a target during World War II, and because of this, hundreds of its original temples, shrines, and structures still stand, setting it apart from the rest of Japan with an identity that is all its own. You could spend weeks immersing yourself in the city, but with only two days, I recommend the first stop to be Kiyomiza Dera. The large wooden temple offers beautiful views of Kyoto all year round, and from here you can enjoy a walk down through the Higashiyama area towards Yasaka Jinja and Gion. These streets will leave you with an impression of the real Japan and can be explored almost endlessly. You can enjoy this at your leisure, but if you find yourself with some extra daylight, I absolutely recommend taking a train to Keage. This is one of Kyoto's peak Sakura locations along the incline rail, which is lined with the trees, Nanzenji Temple, Heon Shrine, and the Philosopher's Path leading towards the Ginkakuji are also found in this area. And if you choose to skip Mount Fuji, this is where I would spend that extra time. When you are done for the day, head back to the Gionchi Shijo area and grab dinner in Pontocho Alley along the Kamo River. This is actually my favorite part of Kyoto and just relaxing along the river is a reward in of itself after a long day. Day 5 No trip to Kyoto is complete without a walk through Fushimi Inari's thousands of red torii gates, and my tip is to make this the first thing you do earlier in the morning is better. Fushimi is completely free and open all hours of the day and night, what's more it's just a few minutes away from Kyoto Station. Due to these factors, Fushimi is Japan's number one tourist spot, and trying to get a picture without other tourists is almost impossible in the afternoon. But early in the morning you can often find it deserted, which for me is the only way to see it. This area also also has some nice cafes and temples that can be enjoyed after you leave Fushimi. Next, let's head back to Kyoto Station, then on to Arashiyama, the Storm Mountain. Here is where you'll find Kyoto's second most famous walk, the Bamboo Grove. Arashiyama is best in the fall, but it's also quite beautiful in spring. Here you can enjoy the romantic railway through the canyons, rent a boat on the calm Katsura River with views of the Togetsukyo Bridge, or take a short walk up Iwatayama, where wild Japanese macaques can be hand-fed, and scenic views of Japan's ancient capital can be seen. In the evening, I would recommend getting a train down to Osaka and checking into your next hotel. But before leaving Kyoto, some alternative activities could include Tofukuji Temple, a side trip to Nara to see the deer and Todaiji, Uji with its rivers, teas, and Byoruin Temple, which can be found on the front of the 10 yen coin, or simply walking around and exploring for yourself. Kyoto has over 1600 Buddhist temples and over 400 Shinto shrines, so you never quite know what you'll find when exploring its streets. Day 6 Coming to the final two days of this all too short trip, I will include a big optional side trip. Here you can either spend the day exploring Osaka City, starting in the morning in Osaka Castle Park, which is surrounded by over 3,000 cherry blossom trees, before heading down to Shinsekai, Japan's retro town with street festival games and a taste of the kitchen of Japan, fried kushikatsu, takoyaki, and okonomiyaki being the specialties. In the evening heading to central Namba and the circle Ibisu Bridge, which is the heart of Osaka's 
nightlife. The Dotombori Canal, Shinsaibashi, Ametakamura, or just exploring for that perfect street photo spot makes this the place to be at night in Osaka. Alternatively, day six can be reserved for the very best sakura spot in all of Japan, Yoshinoyama. Take the luxury sightseeing train Blue Symphony. From Osaka to Yoshino Station, the fare costs just 730 yen, or about $5.50 American, and offers luxury seats and a dining car with cheesecakes, coffee, and of course, Japanese sake. After arriving in Yoshino, you'll immediately see why this is the premier sakura spot. Yoshinoyama has over 30,000 sakura that bloom in stages, which extends the usual sakura season to longer than just the one week. The small mountain town is honestly unforgettable at sunset. Sakura can be seen here even at night, as they are illuminated, but I would head back to Osaka after dark and fit in a little of that number nightlife before heading back up to Tokyo. For some year-round alternative activities in Osaka, you could check out Universal Studios Japan, Osaka Aquarium, Mino Falls, or the World Expo 70 Park. Day 7. It is possible to depart Japan from Osaka at Kansai International Airport, but if you do not have that connecting flight, then jump on the bullet train and head back up to Tokyo. For your last day in Japan you can do any of the things that you missed on your first day, get your souvenir shopping in or visit some of the alternatives mentioned such as Yokohama or the Imperial Gardens. Tokyo has something for everyone so I leave these last days of planning up to you. Just make sure that you don't have too much fun and miss your flight that evening or the following morning. A comment was left on my previous 16 tips for first travelers in Japan video asking what to do about early flights since Japan's train stopped running around midnight to 5am. So it's worth noting that Narita has a capsule hotel attached to it which can make for a fun last night's stay in Japan. At the start of the video, I mentioned that 7 days in Japan will feel all too short. By extending the trip to 10 days, it will give you much more flexibility to explore the country, but the issue is that the JR Rail Pass, which can save you hundreds of dollars in train tickets, can only be bought for 7, 14 or 21 days. So to transform this itinerary into 10 days, I would arrive in Japan, stay one night in Tokyo, activate the pass on the second day, and then head straight to Kyoto, returning to Tokyo as the Rail Pass expires. Local trains aren't as expensive as the bullet train, so putting Tokyo at the end of your trip will offer the best savings. You can also at this point buy a Tokyo wide pass which allows you to travel most of Kanto and even to Nagano which would be great if you took this trip in the winter instead of the spring because then you could see the snow monkeys at the same time. For travelers coming at the end of spring be careful about traveling during golden week which is from April 29th to May 6th. This is the biggest holiday period in Japan and everything especially the theme parks will be very very busy. Although it does allow you to see some unique events like the hundreds of koi nobody that fly for Children's Day. For more activities on this expanded 10 day or longer trip, I'd recommend taking a look at my two weeks in Japan video, which can be found here. So the big question you might be asking is that how much this will all cost. So let's take a look at a one week budget, not including flights. First, transport. The one week rail pass at time of recording costs 29,650 yen or 222 US dollars. This will cover the majority of transport, but there will be a few local, private or metro lines that this will not cover. It's great to pick up an IC card and load it with 5,000 to 10,000 Japanese yen which is about $80. This can also be used on buses, all trains, and you can also use it to pay for drinks and food at convenience stores. There's really no reason not to get one because this can be refunded at the end of your trip, so it can be simply there for convenience and emergency money. This will bring the total transportation cost to around $302. US Accommodation will vary the most between how you like to travel. I often go for a small, clean, and cheap hotels in Japan, which can cost between 3,000 and 6,000 yen, or $22 to $45 a night. However, I am the kind of person that doesn't spend much time in my hotels, and since this is a short trip, I recommend the same. It's not for everyone though, and this is during the spring period, so while you can still absolutely find accommodation at these prices during the spring period, I'm going to double the costs for this estimate just so that there are no surprises, but realistically it can be much much cheaper than the 42,000 yen at the low end and 84,000 on the high end for 7 nights accommodation, or between $315 and $630. To get the most out of your days, I would recommend budgeting around 10,000 to 15,000 yen per day for meals and activities. But you could save a lot of money here by experiencing many of the cheap or low cost activities Japan has on offer. A delicious bowl of ramen, for example, can cost as little as 800 yen or $6. Honestly, when I travel, I don't find myself spending more than 3,000 yen a day. That said, if you do spend 15,000 yen a day, it's going to cost you 105,000 yen or just under $800 which would total the expected cost of this whirlwind seven day adventure to Japan at around $1,400 on average if you don't go too crazy. 
There is a lot of wiggle room though if you do want to do it cheaper however. If you want to learn more about what to expect from your first trip to Japan then you need to check out my 16 tips for newcomers coming to Japan here. I really love making these itineraries and a lot more will be coming out over the next few months so subscribe to not miss out on those. If this video helped you then leave a like and let me know in the comments what questions, tips or places you want to see in Japan next and I will answer them all in time. Japan is one of the best countries to visit and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!